I have a bit of a confession. As you have probably seen from my channel, I grow a lot of succulents and frankly, most of them look awesome most of the time, but I also kill succulents. I have succulents that die. And the reason this happens is not because I don't know how to take care of my succulents. Every once in a while, I'll run into something that I can't figure out why exactly it died. But for the most part, it's not that I don't know what's going on. It's just that I'm not executing that knowledge that I have. And there's a variety of reasons for that. Today though, I want to share a story of some succulents that died and also show you some succulents that survived and what happened. So the most important thing when your succulents die is that you pay attention to it and you learn from it. If you're not learning from anything that happens and your succulents keep dying, they're probably going to just keep dying. So learn how to recognize what's happened with your succulents, how to diagnose what went wrong so that way you can prevent it in the future. So let me show you what I'm talking about. You can see here these panda plants and they are doing pretty well. And I also have some leaves here that have been propagated. Now, let me give you a little bit of backstory on these succulents. About a year ago, I bought a giant pot of panda plants and it was amazing. And I have a video that I can link to where you can see the original plant and how I cut it all down and what I did with it. The short version of the story is it was a giant mess it was so cool, but it was a mess. And so I cut down a bunch of it. I gave some cuttings and some leaves to people who purchased our successfully propagating succulents course last year around this time. And then I planted up a bunch of stuff myself. So I had a ton of leaves and I had a bunch of cuttings. And then I had the original plant with roots. Now the confession comes in that the original plant with roots died, as did two of the biggest cuttings that I saved for myself. So what happened with these and why do I not have that much of the plant left? So being that these were huge plants, there was a ton of it outside. Um, I didn't have the space in my yard to put all of them somewhere in the shade to keep them really protected in the summer. So I live in Phoenix, it's a zone nine. We get days that are well over a hundred for multiple days in a row during the summer. And generally I will try and move all of my succulents into the shade and I have to be really careful with how much I'm watering, making sure I'm giving them enough, but not too much and making sure they do it at the right time. So with this panda plant, because it was so gigantic, the cuttings that I planted were in a place that got too much direct sun. And the interesting thing is they didn't sunburn like most succulents do, they just dried up. And so by the time I realized they weren't getting enough water, the plant actually looked like it was still kind of alive, but it was dried up and crispy. So what happened was I didn't water it enough in the beginning. It didn't get well rooted enough before the heat of summer. And so it didn't have that nice root base to pull water from and it dried up. And really the same thing pretty much happened with the pot of the rooted plants too. So with this pot, um, it was pretty bare because I took a ton of cuttings off of it. Now, this isn't problematic. You can do that with your succulents, but it goes back to the heat and water issue. I had really, really stressed to this plant by unpotting it, cutting everything off, potting it back up again. And then just within a couple months, it got really hot. And same as what happened with the cuttings, it just didn't root enough. It didn't get enough water during those cooler months to put off a really deep root system and come back and thrive. And then to just make the issue worse, we had one of the hottest summers on record. So we had days over a hundred much longer than we normally do. Now, not everything died and I wanna show you what worked. So I have these cuttings and these were super bare stems. They were kind of like just the wonky shapes that I cut off that didn't look good enough to send to someone, but I knew would still survive. They had a couple leaves attached and I planted them in coconut coir. So this is the number one thing that helped save these succulents during the heat. Normally I plant my succulents in Bonsai Jack's Gritty Mix and it works amazingly well for well-rooted succulents, even in the heat. But 
when I was planting these cuttings, I should have been watering them more frequently. So with this set of cuttings that I planted in the coconut coir, they were getting more water because the coconut coir doesn't drain as quickly and it also stays cooler. So despite my lack of watering them over the summer, um, they still survived and thrived. You can see this is super full, especially as compared to when I originally planted them where they were seriously just bare stems. And then the other thing that survived is one tray of leaf propagation. So leaf propagation does not generally do well in extreme temperatures. And I had about four trays, three to four trays of leaves when I was done. And I currently only have one left. So same thing, they didn't get enough water. They got too much heat and they dried up. This particular set of leaves, honestly, I think they were just bound and determined to survive. So they probably got a little bit more water at the beginning, they rooted well, and then they continued to survive for the summer. I do propagate in a more organic mix that holds water longer, but these leaves were troopers. And you can see this tray is kind of a mess. Um, it blew in the wind and things kind of got tossed and turned a little bit. It's been, it's been pretty beat up and yet these leaves are still surviving. So that just goes to show that succulents can survive really, really harsh climates, but not all of them are going to, and you can definitely do things to better set them up for success. So learn from my experience and then also learn from your own experiences. Learn to recognize what's happening and you'll definitely be able to figure out how to keep your succulents alive better. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe, share it with all your succulent loving friends, and I will see you next time.